think it's, it's such an exciting uh, situation. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the Mexican players, when, when there is an event to go to, they travel, they come out. Like, I, uh, at Best of the West earlier in the year, like, Spargo said he took, like, a, I think it was a nine or 10 hour bus ride just to get there. Like, that's a, that's a long ride. And I, I'm, I'm sure that a lot of the players here, they came a long way. Whatever means they had, they made it happen. And that's, I feel like that's a lot of what Smash is about, you know, like coming together as a community, like going through adversity and making sure that, you know, you're here to show everybody what you can do. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's been a great time so far. Me and Jet had breakfast. Great food here in Mexico City. Uh, it's it's <laughs> Ilaquilas, let's go. Dude, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> like, you get it's such a good value uh, coming to these Mexican tournaments because, especially as Americans, we're privileged that, we, you know, our conversion rate is so good that we're able to, like, enjoy, like, great meals and great times for, you know, relatively affordable. So I always tell people in North America, get your passport now. Yeah, get like, your passport. If you don't have your passport, if you're you're watching this stream, get your passport. Come it on. Is, it is so worth it. What are you worth, waiting for? Like, um, S factor will happen, um, and, you know, there's a lot of things to go for. But it looks to me that we are getting into our is this first game. I think we're, I think they're fighting. We got Rizo versus Arellis. We got Sora versus Steve. So right now, uh, the Steve player with a really strong start. I mean, already has Diamond in hand. So we're getting right into it, Jet. Yeah, this is uh, this is something where Sora has a little tough time coming back, uh -huh. but still has a little bit of cheese factor. Like, at any point, you know, you can get caught with one of those air loops into an oh. S-Mash or something like that. And Steve is a character who, quite on the other side, is very difficult to come back against, as we already see a nice setup with that fast gold minecart in the blast zone and a little bit of taunting as Rezo is just going crazy here. Yeah, big damage uh, starting out from Rezo there on that up tilt string, 58%, not even really needing to do anything too fancy. And I think Sora, you know, being one of the lighter characters, will definitely struggle versus Steve in terms of if you cannot keep up with the damage output. And Woo! as I say that and the cheese factor coming in, you get a blizzard, you don't mash out or you mash out at the wrong time and that up smash will find a KO. Yeah, really, really good awareness there to go for a little bit of a, a risky option. But sometimes, you know, you just end up completely flipping that, and then Steve would be able to get a big punish on the other side. But right now, it is a neck and neck match. Not even having the diamond out for Steve, still just sitting on this gold, which is actually prone to breaking quite soon. So might have to rebuild a new tool if they keep mining up. But the gold is back out, and there is the counter to get out of that forward air. He's an up smash combo, PJ. That was kind of sick. I mean, you have to go for the counter there. If you air dodge, you get caught by the uh, up smash anyway. We see a big open up here. Tries to go for the air, goes for the dash attack. Doesn't find a connection, but you're not in a terrible spot here, Sora. At a certain point, any move will KO you, so damage doesn't matter. Uh, but you know, quit getting put in a bad spot there where the minecart will, and a diamond does come online for Rezo, who very solidly just mining in the corner, goes for the forward air on the jump away from the minecart, but can't find the TNT. And uh, oh, there's a big punish for smash. Yeah. This is the moment for Aurelis. I'm just saying. This is a really good chance for them, but Steve is just so hard to track oh, down. The block! The block off the backdrop. Still, oh, another air dodge out, and a great, great air dodge through, but still, just an upbeat. This is anyone's game at this point, TJ. One more comp confirmed. This could be it. No, just a nair out of there. Okay, that's the dash attack on the diamond. The diamond does come online. We have another diamond from Rezo. If he's choosing to pull a lot more iron blocks here, but it didn't seem like you know there's a much of an answer for Relis, who has to mash out, does mash out Sora. Very comfortably, comfortably he's gonna make it back. No, as I say that, the TNT two frame finds the connection and Rezo takes game number one. That wasn't even a two frame, man was a mile from the ledge. <laughs> I think I think maybe I thought it was that nah, was not a two frame. It just it just blew up. No, it's <laughs> it's just such a huge explosion yeah. that just it covered everything. Low-key a final smash. I mean, that is uh, just ridiculous sometimes there. And true. I think it's one of those situations where Sora's recovery being very good, but very slow can definitely be a, a, a problem in the matchup. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the things where when you upbeat, you are now forced to side beat either left or right. So we saw that Sora was going for a very low recovery, yeah. which means they had to explicitly use exactly three side Bs to get up there, which means there's no mix-ups. There's no timing, there's no timing mix ups at all. And you just have to go directly to the ledge. And you know, Reza was ready for that. Yeah, and uh, I believe that was just game one, so we're gonna be getting some counter picks here. And I assume we're gonna be seeing the Sora Steve Three, matchup, which is, uh, you know, it was one, sprung on us, but I think a very interesting matchup to start yeah, off with. It was a close one. Yeah, it that was definitely was. a close one. And you were talking about that uh, that added factor. We're gonna be seeing factor a lot. The added factor of uh, Sora is able factor to find. Count. 
Fine. Somebody in the chat, get the factor count out. <laughs> no more nice backer. Factor is a new thing. Um, you know, we saw that early stock uh, with the Blizzard into the up smash on the um, lack of mash from the C player. So I think that's something you have to constantly be uh, worried about versus Soros. Soros' ability to just turn over a game because they get one big opening and you get put through those cutscene combos, you get put through those nair loops, and it becomes very, very scary, very, very fast. Yeah, and also just the advantage state from Soros can be really suffocating with that fair. Yeah. It's really difficult, especially if you're a floating character like Steve, to find your way down if you don't have the enemy. So we, we actually saw a point where Steve had to was forced to build the, uh, the iron pool instead of the uh, instead of you know the gold or the diamond, and I feel like that was a great opening for Aurelis to, to get that going. But all right, now we're back into this next game as both these both these players have already got a decent amount of percent. In, oh, I like that beefy side B there, going straight past the ledge and eating out whatever option that Reza was throwing out. Yeah, immediately getting another diamond and had 162% on Aurelis here who's looking to break the block to a thunder and it actually works out there but trades with a down tilt on that up B and now you're in a pretty bad spot. The anvil comes in and the side B just stalling right below the ledge. Maybe not the option you want versus a character that could put hitboxes there so consistently. Yeah, the, the timing mix-up doesn't really work out too well when you're uh, when you have an anvil that just covers every single option that whole area. And now we do see the one, two, up smash, but not enough to get the stock in it. That was a really interesting recovery. Use the anvil to dip below the ledge, so he didn't have to deal with Zora's advantage state, but a counter here, and back in the game is a relic. You have to be so careful versus that Zora counter, which doesn't have the reflector hitbox, but it is very, very strong. I mean, it will find KOs, especially when you throw out those uh, dash attacks on the diamond. Here's a big Nair open up out of shield, gets a nice 30% and some space. Uh, tries to pull a blizzard there, but gets uh, caught with the grab. And I think we've been seeing that from Rezo pretty successfully so far. It's more grabs this game. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of grabs and a lot of TNT. I mean, I feel like Rezo is one of the most prolific TNT users I have seen out of Steam. And they're just like, all right, every single time you're in the corner, we know Sora takes an hour to cover. Why not? Uh, somewhat of a drop combo from Morellis, but is able to find a forward smash for it and now going for that ledge grab. Oh, no. Gets reversal, but a good air dodge out and an uppy out of shield. It doesn't KO, but it, it puts you in a really great spot for a jungle. As I say that, the minecart trades out and a double up tilt, but get caught out there. That's something that Sora will bring to the table is the reversal that KO, KO you off the top, which is exactly where Steve combos you. Have to be very airtight with those combos. Unfortunately, trying to use the, uh, the blizzard to mess that up, but a full oh, mic in the back air. Little bit unfortunate situation for Relis, but I believe this is all best of five. So we're gonna be going into this next game. What do you think is gonna be something that Relis could do differently here? Uh, I think that uh, there's been a pretty big swing in resources for Rezo. I think Rezo is just constantly building up diamonds. We, we basically I haven't seen Rezo uh, starve the materials, and I think that's something that, as Sora being a floatier character that maybe isn't the fastest, can struggle with. But I think I want to see more of that aggressive, where you're like, okay, I'm going to close in on that side, place, play at a range where you can't grab me or just swing at me, but I can still, you know, try to get in your face so that you can't just pull, you know, infinite amount of resources. And I think that's something that's going to be very, very important going into this next game. But we'll see uh, how much it matters. We see a missed input there, so you like sure, but can get. Punished. does get punished trying to dash off the platform by that Dundaga and uh, we're looking uh, pretty even so far but even the wooden tools get some big damage going. Yeah still just getting out of there back to even percent and pulling the, the, the Dundaga just to get through that that giant wall that TNT creates. Uh, I think TNT does actually break the the little uh, foot pedal that you can use to explode it so a lot of times Sora will try to use the Dundaga or the Faraga to get through that, but now, oh, just a counter on the minecart, but unfortunately for Morellis, Reza was already out of there. Nice on that air dodge, he gets the forward smash there, and the Thunder tried again, trying to get a two frame there, didn't find it, but an air one, two, into the four tilt, Ooh. first hit, and then goes for a charge forward smash, doesn't find the forward smash connection, but you're looking not too bad here as Aurelis. I mean, the damage, you know, you are lighter than Steve, but keep up the pressure, and the side nice. piece, it's a forward smash, works out again. A great trap set up by the Sora player. Most Soras will go for all three hits for damage. Aurelis realizing F smash will find a KO here. I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, it's one of those where if you go for, uh, if you don't air dodge there, a lot of times you'll get smashed by that first hit. But this time, oh, just a up smash to clean up that combo. Still getting a little bit more damage out of this Blizzaga. I mean, this is a huge, uh, huge beat for Aurelis and oh, getting almost another up smash. Could have 
just put the game completely away, BJ. Are we getting a reverse 3 0 for our first game? I think right now the way Aurelis is playing the counterplay is coming in in a big way. A lot of air dodge punishes. That is the benefit of Sora and the multi hits is that you constantly are trying to air dodge to, you know, check if their combos are true. But sometimes you do an air dodge at a wrong spot and you just lose your spot for it. Aurelis with two big air dodge reads and two big spots for it and still at 146% going in, trying to get that extra credit, even though you're up to uh, three spots to one. I'm loving this counterplay of the flying part as well, just using the, the fire as, as well as the side beat to sort of beat out that hitbox completely. And oh, that time a little bit too slow and a little bit too slow on the mash as the minecart takes you all the way into the blast zone. Okay, this is a big open up here, but the pickaxe immediately breaks and that stifles all combo game. You have to build some stone tools, but the grab going beneath the ledge and even grabbing through the block. That's just some classic Steve shenanigan to the right side of the stage. A relic with the ledge trap here, Nair Nair into the up smash and gets the Thundaga full connection. And right now, Aurelis looking for that KO. We've seen what the air dodge reads give to Aurelis. Just one nice call out and there it is. That's the counter. Aurelis has been going for that counter so many times. And a lot of times, just He's hitting the, the minecart after it's been left, but this time, the full strength with the gold, powered up minecart, that's gonna kill you no matter what percent you're at. Yeah, that, we saw that in the first game taking a stock, I think, or maybe there was a second game, but yeah, if you uh, counter the minecart hitbox, it actually has really good KO power, so you have to be very careful about when you're minecarting, especially versus a character like Sora that is really easy to get very vertical very fast. A lot of speed players will minecart high and then kind of ride it downwards. You can meet that height and counter uh, Sora pretty consistently, uh, and that's something that, you know, Aurelis is showing that uh, they're willing to pull out here, and we see a counter pick from Rezo uh, into Banjo and Kazooie off the seat. All right, we got a DLC battle here. <laughs> Sora and Banjo are going at it. This is, this is not something I expected, but hey, Rezo pulling out the Banjo and it's already working out fairly well. 72% almost completely unanswered. It's a Wonder Wing already letting it rip. Okay, that's getting hit by the Tundaga there. You burned two Wonder Wings so far here. And Morellis with a nice carry off. Goes for another air dodge read. Correct read, wrong timing. But uh, you still have a very comfortable advantage state. You're getting a couple nares here, going for that up air as well that extend that combo vertically. Something that I think Banjo will struggle with. Uh, besides Bomb, you don't have a great option at finding landings. And I think Aurelis is going to understand that and try to start these platforms. But if you whiff in a bad spot, that Wonder Wing will come in and will KO you very, KO you very early. Yeah, Banjo is not the greatest at punishing you on field, but when you when you whip, it's it is just a free Wonder Wing, especially with the slow Sora aerial and spell. So nice awareness there, getting that, and you know a great spot to get a counter pick. And when you're up to one, you know you just sort of have a game left that you can try something new out. And if it doesn't work, you can just go straight back to your main. Although it certainly appears to be working. Although oh, the up smash is just not quite the right timing, but still. Answering back is Rezo's huge amount of damage is very, very amazing. Uh, that's an interesting thing that uh, you can do and counterplay after you get hit by Blizzard is you wait for the sword to charge up smash and you just don't mash anymore and they're going to hit you with the up smash eventually and it won't knock you back, it'll just break you out of the ice. Yeah, yeah I like that. Alright, the upbeat does get the first stock for Aurelis. Coming back into this game a little bit, but still, this is, uh, this is where it, it feels like Banjo has been getting a lot of damage. It's just these ledge trapping, setting up these eggs. We're having a hard time dealing with it. He finally gets out with that get up attack. And still a lot of room to grow for this sword. Still has a lot of work to come back. Okay, gets the uh, IDJ combo there. Not the full extension, but some pretty nice damage. And fortunately, you're not getting reversal to that sword. And I mean, at this point, you're getting uh, KO'd by up tilt, which you saw there from Rezo. But you have to be very careful, very shifty as a relic. But a relic has been showing uh, their ability to you know, be very, very evasive and not lose those stocks, even at the high percent. Yeah, I haven't seen a ton of real blaster stuff out of Rezo just yet. Maybe uh, Relic's putting too so much pressure on them to set it up. But once again, the whiff. Heavily punished. Uh, big read, big risk. Here, Relic's gonna reel back and then realizing you know, I can still win this game. Getting a Nair there into the up smash, a great way to start off your comeback here. Two stocks are down, one stock to two. Another grenade comes out, and the grenades have been such a big problem for Relic. And as I was just really showing, and maybe hearing Jet there going for a lot more of those usual bees on that ledge trap. Yeah, I'm liking that setup there, but still just very incremental damage coming out. Not enough to kill just yet, but we've seen how. 
how uh, Arouse really likes going for these big reads, you know, these, these smash attacks. But okay, finally, Wonder Wing is gone. He does play East Play a little bit differently versus this character because you're not worried about that huge damage output. And wow, the Blizzard, the Blizzard just eats up the, uh, eats up the grenade completely. Yeah, we saw Arellis do something similar to TNT as a way to kind of knock it back and also move the hitbox away from uh, Sora, which is a very smart option. And you find a little KO there. I mean, very high percent on the Banjo. The Banjo refreshing uh, your Wonder Wing here on your last stock. Yeah, five uses for that. We'll see how that comes out. And, you know, although it feels like after that first off, Arellis got a feel for how Rezo was playing and the evasive options they're going for, and now it's just really tracking it, Rezo down with a lot of these with a lot of these aerials and getting more and more conversions. It's a scary spot for uh, for the banjo. They might be uh, on the verge of getting come back on. Okay, the bomb there to try to cover the normal get up and an up smash comes in and the damage has all but equalized here. Nice wait there on the uh that was a Nair with Punish with a forward smash and a really great spot to be in. The Blizzard actually maybe pushing back there, maybe Reza just didn't have the verticality to punish uh, that Blizzard, but gives it down, bro. Let's see the mash out. We go this, for the Nair into the re-grab. Doesn't find the re-grab, Aurelis with another opportunity to hold on here. Drag down Nair, goes for the grab again, but crossing up that time and just immediately air dodging away. Don't interact with it. The no mash mix up doesn't get punished this time, but a big open up. The Nair 1 2 into the up smash takes it and. Wow, I cannot believe the conversion work. We're going to game five. Ah, uh, you called the reverse 3-0 earlier. I, 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 thought it, I thought it was a little premature, but hey, Aurelis has something to say about that. Getting that second that second game on the board versus a very non-traditional character like this Banjo is always threatening when it comes out because you, you don't know what type of options they're going to do. You don't know what type of stuff they're going to be doing. But this time, managed to adapt in time to take the game, and Aurelis now on game five. What a way to start this off, BJ. Yeah, and uh, we get a little bit of uh, that crane camera you'll be seeing throughout the weekend. Oh, there. the crane camera is so cool. It's going to be moving around the venue. You're going to be able to see. We see some casters there in the backstage area. There's a lot of great uh, camera shots you're going to be getting, so they should be ready to screenshot if you got your friends on stage. But nonetheless, we get into game five here. The first set for us in winner's round two of pools. Uh, he's going to start off with a game five. We'll see who takes it here. And Rezo, as you were talking about having that cushion of the one extra game, this is immediately switching back to him. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a reasonable choice to go for it. Like, the banjo looked pretty solid. It just yeah. seemed like, for, for some reason, Arellis was able to adapt super quickly. But now we're back in this game. Good avoidance, using a little bit of stalling out for uh, for Sora, but it is, it is dangerous because he can just wait longer and you are a little bit slow coming back on the stage. However, yeah, yeah, out this time. It, it's so interesting. What I'm noticing is like when the game is going controlled and very neutral, Rezo winning a lot. But as soon as the scrap happens, somehow Aurelis always comes out on top in these really random scrap situations. I think as Rezo, you just got to create some space, maybe build some walls. We haven't been seeing that same strategy from game one. Yeah, that is really interesting that there, there hasn't been a lot of like defensive wall places. It's yeah. mostly been offensive. And I, I wonder if that would, uh, that would really favor Rezo if they, if they backed up and just tried to set up a little bit more, but another <laughs> another minecart in this situation. This isn't actually dealing any damage, which is extra funny. Well, it's doing damage to the controller. Which yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's a real thing. Like, there's a lot of input that the controller's reading right now. Uh, but nonetheless, not losing a stock for it. Maybe just a little controller help. Okay, that's the controller <laughs> help. You're thinking the long term, man. <laughs> this is the this is the multiple set play. Oh, okay. it doesn't get the full confirm there. Yeah. I think you might have been looking for an up smash, but still finding the up air nonetheless. But this time, Rezo is full up on that. Ooh. Okay, that's the counterplay there. We saw the immediate air dodge down, getting punished by an up air there. No big extension, but as I keep saying, as soon as Aurelis gets in the face of Rezo, you just start seeing some crazy damage coming out from the Sora. Yeah, it, every time it, it just looks so innocuous, right? It's just like one or two little tiny hits, but then it's just like, wait, hold on a sec, I'm at 60. And suddenly, this team with a diamond is looking quite weak compared to Sora with a Keyblade. Okay, we see a counter there at the ledge. It Another one. That was a very smart uh, play from Morella so far. And just eating the iron away from Rezo, who is using quite a bit of that pickaxe durability on mining. Doesn't get the forward air there, and the counter misses as well. No punishes altogether. But another match check uh, on, a, on for Rezo there, and it's just really tough for Aurelis to get off this ledge. You're not losing your soft for it, but it's just very, very difficult to constantly face a challenge that Steve presents in this minecart and TNT combination. Yeah, but that, that takes up so much resources, and also, yeah. Aurelis barely got hit for any of that. Like, it was it was a very extended sequence, but it, it doesn't no matter how long the sequence is, as long as you aren't taking any damage. 
Aurelis was able to find their way out of that. Oh, okay. Trying to find a, a little bit of a, a, cute, a cute up B there. Not going to get oh. it. Oh, this time. Tried to hit the TNT and paid the price. And this is, could be a huge opening. Gets the reset and the pickaxe breaks. But there is another diamond on deck. The Department of Defense is here. And they're, uh, they're trying to deal even more damage. Yeah, you see that they're going for that charge up smash without dashing up. It's just not going to find a connection. And right now you're looking very solid as Rezo with a 56% and a stock lead. And uh, looking to last in percentage here. And there's the back air that pulls out the stalling. Thundaga and Rezo takes it game five with a two stock. It's crazy how that just one singular mistake of going for the back air on the TNT in a bad spot caused Aurelis to lose that game, and they're, they're cheesing it up a little bit. You know, just being like, oh man, imagine if I didn't back air that one time. Yeah. Oh. It's okay though. Great showing from Aurelis. Both these players moving on. And uh, yeah, I mean, I still winner's match, so still has a chance in the losers, but that will be a bit of a grueling run to go through, PJ. Yeah, the elimination side. If you don't know how uh, double elimination bracket works, if you, uh, to get to grand finals from losers, say you start losers round one and winners round one, it takes double the matches to get to grand finals. So it, it's very, very difficult to make those deep runs. But hey, if you're looking for experience, maybe not the worst thing. I mean, some people, you know, really activate in the loser side of bracket as well. Yeah, I mean, it is a little bit of exhausting, but some people are just like, sometimes they want to, sometimes they really want those games. They really want all those extra matches. And, hey, I'm, I'm happy to see it. You know, if somebody makes a losers run, if somebody, somebody makes a loser's run from loser's round one, it's just all the more wild of a story. I mean, there's always those, you know, legendary loser runs. You you think of like MK, MK Leo at Genesis. Yeah. You know, just like, uh, what was it, Mango? Was it a big house? Pound. It was a pound. It was pound, yeah. Pound three. Pound yeah. three, that was it. Yeah, it's just, they, you, you people talk about those for decades. So, you know, it'll, it'll be cool to see if anybody makes a, a big run through the loser's bracket of a tournament such as this. But for now, player's going to move on, try to figure out, the next opponent and see see if uh, they can you know show up a little bit more yeah for sure i think we saw some pretty interesting stuff from Aurelis uh, in the sore like some scramble situations that Aurelis was ready to capitalize on but just wasn't confident in going for the full combo we yeah. saw Aurelis hitting confirmed we saw i saw 